Now, if you recall a couple of weeks ago, Pro and I, WW Pro and I had a discussion about some uh, some information that, that may point to the fact that this new slate of DC films that we have coming, uh, people seem to kind of lukewarm reception to it, right? And then we hear that maybe they're going that route because they are going to position Warner Brothers Discovery to be acquired by a larger entity. Think an Amazon or an Apple, which Apple, you've heard me talk about for the last couple of years, is they're the 800-pound gorilla in the room with all the cash and have been very quietly sitting in the corner waiting for somebody. I thought maybe that somebody might one day be Paramount. Maybe it's going to be Warner Brothers with the IPs they have. But that's something that is potentially, if it's going to happen, at least three to five years away from as best we could gather, which would make total sense. I know people had rumors out there that Zaslav was trying to position Warner Brothers to sell like this year or next year. And I'm like, no, that would be stupid. You've got to get Warner Brothers in a position to where it's going to be more valuable when you sell it than when you acquired it. Uh, it does no good to sell something, you know, at no profit or at worst a loss. So they're going to have some very ambitious goals over the next three to five years to get them into a position if that's where they indeed wind up trying to go to sell to an Apple or an Amazon um, to, to get there. And part of that is creating some level of reboot with their major IPs like Harry Potter and like uh, uh, the DC Universe so that somebody who comes in and buys it is then able to mold wherever the future direction of those IPs go to the way they want it. Basically, they have a small setup, get the audience excited again, but you don't go so far down the road with rebooting these IPs that a potential buyer is going to be locked into whatever has already been slated at that point. So again, that was from the rumor mill. I think that there is certainly some reasonable veracity to it. I mean, any company in the position of Warner Brothers would probably be looking at that. If you look at all the M&As, the mergers and acquisitions that have happened in the entertainment industry in the last uh, few years, why not? I mean, it's certainly on the table. It's something that should be discussed. And I think, look, he needs to continue to wow investors and wow people watching this into the direction. Because again, if the rumors are true, as we mentioned before, that he is trying to position this company to sell it to a larger peer, Apple, Amazon, in three, four, five years, this is the kind of news you want to put out there. This, this is what raises the specter of the saleability of your company. So, In answering that question, you reiterated something you said before, which was an intent to fold the discovery content into the new product. There had been some media reports a few weeks ago that you were going to actually keep discovery as a standalone product. Is that ah, something you're able to in comment a corner. on now? I mean, just simply that um, for those that have Discovery right now, the churn is very low and it's profitable, Discovery Plus. Many of those people are going to want to move up to a bigger product, more robust, with, with a bigger offering. For those that are happy paying 5 or $7 and having you know, home, food, uh, uh, Discovery, and, and, and own type content, um, our strategy is no sub left behind. We have profitable subscribers that are very happy with the product offering of Discovery Plus, um, why would we shut that off? Thank you. And it is a shared, Ooh, good answer. The, the platform itself for Discovery I'll Plus talk about will be a again. shared platform. So we have a best of, we, we have all this work that we've done to build this platform will be taken, you know, so that to the benefit of all of our subscribers on all of our uh, different products. And Brad, just to be clear, the Discovery content would still be available on the bigger relaunched uh, uh, combined product. No question about that. Understood. Thank you. But I'm keeping my... Right, let's go to the next question, please. David, if, if James and his DC strategy is successful, which I'm sure is your expectation, you know, what does that mean for the company overall over the long term? You know, obviously, successful films will help your studio segment earnings, but and I know it's a tough question to put numbers around, but just as you think about the impact of, of DC, you know, sort of fully realizing the opportunity over the next, you know, five plus years, what could that mean to Warner Brothers Discovery and, and sort of the earnings power of the organization? And then Gunnar, you sound very bullish and confident on the DTC targets, the billion dollars of EBITDA in 25. Can you talk a little bit about the revenue outlook for D2C? You had 6% growth this quarter, a lot of that from advertising and content, but do you need revenue growth to accelerate in order to deliver that billion dollars? Just maybe help us think about the levers you have 
and your expectations are on top good line question. over the next few years. Is it there Thank and you, you just need to skinny up the costs, yes, or thanks, do you man. need to actually we're, add $10 million more we subs? We were laser-focused on building this D.C. 10-year plan. Um, James was writing Superman. Directed we were spending time years, with him yeah. and Peter, mm-hmm. um, and he had a vision for, for D.C. that we are all in on and believe in. Um, he presented that to you and, and the press about, uh, about a month ago. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of the biggest value creation opportunities for us. I think it, it could and should be huge because it, it wasn't being pushed on. If you, look, if you look at DC, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings, and then you take a look at Warner as a company without those three, okay, it's those three are the tentpole products that when someone's at dinner anywhere in the world and they look at their watch at eight o'clock and you mention Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, in every country, they leave dinner and they got to go home to view that product that they love. It gives a huge advantage with those tent poles. And so we are a storytelling company, but we, I believe we, you know, that we have an overwhelming advantage in the marketplace with the IP that we own. But to, take, but to get that advantage, we have to create great content with that IP. So that storytelling IP, we haven't done a Superman movie in 10 years. We haven't done new Harry Potter content in over a decade. And Lord of the Rings, which is a fantastic franchise, and, you know, and, and Andy Jassy was pushing on it at Amazon with, with a lot of success. Well, we own those movie rights. And so we want to optimize that <laughs> as a unified strategy for the company. And we take that Damn. across film, TV, and, and even, you know, to, to sell to, to third parties, because we have something, we have a treasure that no one else has. And, you know, for, for us, D.C. alone uh, will be a game, could and should be a, ga- a game changer. And I think there was a lot left on the table. We got to take those swings. We got some of the best creatives in the industry right now focused on those swings. Amazon's got the yeah, dinky and, uh, little uh, leftover the, stuff. Uh, on, on we the got DSC, the movie rights. Uh, question. Let me start uh, with, the, with the revenue side of it. We, we definitely... You know, we talked about a week or two ago now, the rumor was that the reason that slate that James Gunn has seems rather light is because they're just trying to get enough of a Warner Brothers DC reboot going to where they can position it for a sale like the whole thing, the whole Warner Brothers kit and caboodle, in about three to five years, perhaps to an Amazon or an Apple. I'd rather so, have Apple than Amazon yeah. because I've, I've seen what Apple's, Amazon... Yeah, Apple's no. the one that has all the money that, 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 can, that can do this and that has been sitting very quietly and patiently in the corner of the room. I kept, I kept wondering if Apple was just going to outright snap up Paramount when they restructured. Can you imagine um, that though? If Paramount Plus was included in every iPhone purchase, well, that that's kind of the point. Now HBO yeah. Max will be. I mean, yeah. if, if in theory, right? If five years from now Apple decides, well, look, and this is the point. Right now, Zaslav does this big press event on April twelfth, and they announce Hogwarts Legacy, the HBO Max series, and they announce, um, or at least give us more details on these new Lord of the Rings movies. Now, again, War of the Rohirrim has already been in the ether, animated, Peter Jackson's involved. We don't know a whole lot, or he didn't say a whole lot about what these new Lord of the Rings movies would be. Seems exceptionally unlikely that they would be like complete reboots of the original Peter Jackson trilogy. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's, because there's plenty enough material out there for them to make a bunch of legit Tolkien stories from and make new, and they don't have to be necessarily like a trilogy or interconnected movies. They might make a story about this, a story about that, a story about this. They have all of that at their fingertips because Zaslav was like, well, yeah, you know, Amazon's got this thing over here, but we got the movie rights. Movie uh, rights are here. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to put a call down, and I think they would probably go in with the origin story of uh, Smeagol or Gollum first. Very, very possible. Well, here's the thing. And I was hearing that there was a bunch of checks being cut by Amazon to get rights to characters to from Warner Brothers and all this other business. I don't know. Maybe things broke down a little bit and they're like, fuck this. And and they got in their conversation with uh, uh, Embracer Group and they're like, Embracer's like, well, we want movies. And Warner Brothers is like, well, so do we. Yep. And so they've gotten along. Because what, what Embracer Group bought this for was to exploit it through video games, toys, merchandising. 
They need movies and stuff to be able to do that or shows. Mostly, right? so. mostly movies. Mostly TV shows don't sell the merch that same way. I mean, not like it's not like Ninja Turtles, right? Where a TV <gasps> show or Transformers it's going to sell merch. You're, you're going to set Tom off. Don't mention Ninja Turtles right now. I, I know that's kind of. <laughs> I know I saw uh, it. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, seriously. Like, if you want to sell, like, for something like this, like like Star Wars, with the exception of like a one-off thing like Grogu that came out of a TV show because their the sequel trilogy provided next to nothing when it came to long-lasting merch for Disney on Star Wars stuff. Um, usually you get that off of big tentpole franchise films. So they're definitely going to want to go movie with this if they want to ingratiate themselves with the Embracer group for more merch and through, you know, third and Embracer group's going to want to turn around and go to Mattel and Hasbro and, you know, fill in the blank other toy companies and merchandise manufacturing companies to do new LOTR stuff. Um, and then somebody is going to get their hands on Lord of the Rings for theme park at some point in the near future. There's going to be an announcement in the next few years. Universal Studios or somebody will do that, you know, and say, oh, we're, we're going to we're going to make a Lord of the Rings theme park land or something like that. I can't believe that hadn't been, you know, touched yet. Well, but, Warner used to have ties with what was it? Six Flags? I think it was who had the Batman they did, ride yeah, and all that yeah, business. Yeah, uh, yeah, is there, are they still tied in with them or is that not really? I mean, I mean, I think I say, there may yeah. be a tacit connection, but I mean, Six Flags is funny. We were talking about that at the beginning because somebody was asking about would mm. Comcast Universal buy Six Flags? And I'm like, unlikely. That's not the kind of theme park they want to operate. Who even owns them anymore? Yeah. Six Flags, it's still publicly traded. Yeah. It's their, their, their own company. So, was I mean, they're, yeah. they're, what they've been trying to do is rebrand Six Flags by. They, they wanted to raise ticket prices like a lot mm. and ba because the problem Six Flags has is it has a reputation of being a cheap, dumpy theme park now where parents go to dump their kids off because it's cheap. So in order to get rid of that problem, you have to raise the ticket prices more in line with like a universal, not as high as a Disney, but you have to raise the ticket prices to keep out what you don't want. Spruce up the parks, make it nicer, make it a much more overall family-friendly place instead of just teenagers running around trashing the park, um, and and bring that kind of crowd in. So they're they're trying to undergo like a, a you know, a rejuvenation at this point. Um, but any case, yeah. So because the people that have the money that want to go to theme parks, they don't go to Six Flags. I mean, not not by and large, not in the numbers that Six Flags needs. I mean, that's why they've been bleeding financially bleeding for years let's see Disco oh the discovery plus issue let me bring this up this was brought up a few weeks ago when they talked when we had the same conversation about is david zasloff going to position this for a sale to amazon or apple in three to five years that's why the dc slate is a little bit on the light side because it gives amazon and apple a chance to do whatever they want with it down the road they set it up they get kind of get everything going but they don't create a hard slate for the next 10 years to where if Apple buys it, they can still kind of come in. They have a nice groundwork laid. They can do whatever they want with it after that. The issue with Discovery Plus is standalone. I kind of found this interesting. It's like, well, we already have a lot, a huge swath of people that are, you know, they're, they're bought in and Discovery Plus itself is very profitable. And even though they're going to merge in the content and programming into the new HBO Max Discovery, whatever they're going to call it at that point, HBO Discovery Discovery Max, who knows? Um, I, I don't know what they're going to name it. They're going to rebrand the whole thing. But he's still keeping Discovery Plus as a separate subscription Fantasy. service. Well, and I'm what I said at the time was that seems funny because that seems to lend credence to the fact that if Zaslav decides to sell Warner Brothers in three to five years, he could still effectively walk out the door with his Discovery product mm, and go back to what he was doing before. Yeah, that's true. With, um, no, with no unwinding. Of the, of the subscription services. Because, like, I, I'm, I'm against them changing it from HBO because I thought that was the better named of the service, and I think it's served them well to this point. But I did read about where they were concerned that uh, the reason where their growth is concerned and they're not getting families is because the HBO stigma of it being for adults, more or less. So I, I understand them wanting to change it. I'm just not so sure anything they change it to is going to be better. That's the problem uh, yeah. because Warner's not like Disney, like people recognize the WB shield, but they don't know it like Disney. You know, mm -hmm. Disney is a brand that is a, a lifestyle brand. Warner Brothers is not. 
Uh, it, it has various avenues of things that they do, and it's huge. And they've got tons and tons of IPs and properties and back catalogs and you name it. But mm-hmm. what they don't have is a brand recognition kind of thing like like Disney does. Um, and they're, they're trying to work towards thing. that. I think that that's part of this. You know, they, they've gotten the last 10 months. Z- David Zaslov has, has or even Apple for that matter. But yeah. Yeah. David Zaslov has achieved a tremendous amount in just 10 months with what he's done at Warner. And it was like, oh, they're still drowning in debt. They still have this. First of all, every company no. has debt. Warner Brothers had more than most. That was the problem. That's why AT&T See. said, bye, merge with Discovery. It's going to take time to get it down. The fact of the matter is where HBO Discover or where Warner Brothers Discovery is right now, just 10 months or so, uh, not even quite 10 months or so, after the, the this reverse Morris Trust spinoff and merger, they're a lot further along through this process than virtually anybody anticipated they would be at this point. And for, I'm talking about from a structural financial side of things, you know, because look, all the stuff about DC and Harry Potter and, and, and all, you know, the big IPs they have, Lord of the Rings, that, that, that all doesn't mean anything. They can't do anything with it until the financial ship is turned in the right direction. They're getting it there a lot faster than anticipated, which means that's why this event, I see people in the chat asking, we got Little small announcements today. Teasers. David Zaslav was much more quiet on some of the specifics than he usually is sometimes. And that is because he was plugging towards this April 12th big press event that Warner Brothers is going to do. Where is from what it seems like, we're going to get a lot more detail on Lord of the Rings, on Harry Potter, and on DC at that point. Ready.